today we want to talk about financial planning and I'm privileged this morning to have Mario with me. Um, Mario is a financial planner and so that I do justice to Mario's CV, I'll ask him to introduce himself to us. Yes, Mario. Uh, Nyaris, Nyaris, thank you so much for having me. Uh, guys, my name is Mario. I'm a financial planner with uh, Showworth Advisory Services. I specialize in tele making tailor-made financial plans for young individuals and basically everyone in general who needs financial planning services. And uh, so today we are here to discuss the whole process of financial planning and how and why is it important for you as an individual. So I'm happy to be here and to give you simple advice and what, what I do. Thank you so much, Mario. Uh, so Mario here speaks three languages, guys. He speaks Afrikaans, he speaks English, he speaks Oshiriro, just like me. But for the sake of you guys, we're going to speak in English. Yeah. <laughs> so today I have a couple of questions that I have for Mario, uh, which you probably also have. Um, and as I ask, he's going to use basic English, right, Mario? Yeah, yeah. Because we all don't understand financial jargon. So he's going to simplify it for us. And by the end of this uh, session, we'll all know and understand what financial planning is, what it entails, and how you can also reach out to him if you need a tailor-made financial plan. He says he'll be very happy to assist in that regard. So, Mario, to start with, can you please explain to us what is financial planning? Okay. Uh, financial planning is basically a process of pursuing your life goals through proper management of your financial resources. So, it's important for you to make sure that you are managing your financial resources, uh, how can I say, in, in a good way, whereby you will be able to achieve your life goals. So, there's quite six important steps that we follow in order to tell and make a financial plan for you as an individual. So the first step is for you to establish a professional relationship with you, you and your advisor. The sixth step is for the advisor to, to gather data from you. That's why I say it's important for you to, 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 to know how to manage your money. So we gather data such as your financial uh, statements. We have to know what, what is going on in your personal life. How does your financial background look like? The, 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 the third step, we now analyze those financial information that you have given us. The fourth step is to, to, to give you a recommendation. So after I'm done analyzing all your financial information and looking at your needs and, and, and wants, I implement a specific plan that, you, that we can follow. So after that, I share this specific plan with you. And then whether if you are happy or not, if you, if you are happy, we implement it. And then after that, after implementing, which is now the fifth step, the sixth step is to review so that we can align this plan with your life goals. So it's basically simple, simple things. For us as advisors, it's simple, but it's my job to make it easier for you to understand what the plan is all about. How is it different from a budget? I'm just thinking of what you have said, and then if I bring out my my statement for the month, and then I just say, okay, I'm going to spend so much on the groceries, so much on this. How is it different from my budget? Okay, so when it comes to financial planning, we have to keep it holistic. It's all about the big picture. Yes. Having a budget is very important, yes. But then if you want a financial plan, we have to look at uh, making, for example, making provision for your biggest asset, which is your ability to earn an income. Having a budget is number one, but then we have to look at the big picture. Do you have kids? We need to make provisions that if something happens to you, your kids will be taken care of. You know, we have to look at your life goals. What are, what are your life goals? What, what are your short term, medium term and long term goals? Do you understand? So that we'll be able to, to plan out a, a specific plan that you can work towards too. Do you understand? For instance, you have kids. You have to make a plan on how you're going to contribute towards their education. You are a working class individual or a self-employed individual, meaning you have to start planning towards your retirement. There's also estate planning. You have to look at that as well. So if you have a financial plan, we have to keep it holistic. Think about the big picture. Don't just think about the budget. Just the budget is very important, mm -hmm. but then you have to look at the whole picture. Understand? Wow. So yes. it's it, so that's how that's how we put it. In your financial plan, it has to include whatever you're what you're saving for. If you have kids. Um, are you saving? Are you saving for them? Yes, Retirement movies, planning. Yes, exactly. University. Yes. Okay. It's important to include all those things in your financial plan. For instance, if you are a married couple. Yes. 
you have to in, you you have to tell them that you are married and we have to make plans accordingly because what what happens if one one of the one of the two partners dies you would still like your partner to still maintain the same lifestyle we don't want to think yeah. about death you see so it's <laughs> I, I know that a lot of people don't really think about that part but it's quite important to include it in your financial plan that's true do you understand and also a state planning is very important because you don't want your estate to be insolvent if you pass away. So what does that mean? So being insol- insolvent basically means that there's not enough money to pay off debts. Okay. Understand? If you if you owe people individuals and then you die, they will have to sell some of your assets that are part of your estate. And keep in mind, if you have kids and you haven't made provision for that, it's going to be very devastating. So when we tailor made a plan, that's why it's important for us to look at the whole thing as a, in a holistic type of way. I like what you're saying, Mario, because I have seen like where I come from when the say the husband dies, the relatives come and snatch everything yes. from the house, and the kids are left vulnerable. Uh, you see, the the reason why it happens is the fact that uh, people are misinformed. If you have a will and you have stated all your wishes, what what you want to happen if you pass on, nobody can touch. Your, your your beneficiaries or your partner's assets. If you state that if I pass on today, my car is going to go to my husband or my car is going to go to my uncle. Yeah. Nobody can touch your stuff. Okay. So it happens, what you said right now, happens the fact that people don't have wills. They don't believe in wills. It's just so tough to write about <laughs> de- dying. Yeah, yeah. No, that we but know, yes. but it's something that you have to look That's into and true. it's very important to have a will and it has to be part of your financial plan wow i think you are hearing this guys i think this is really a helpful uh discussion here so if i don't know mario are you able to just give me like an example of a financial plan so um what would it look like i know you have already talked about having the holistic picture but maybe just give an example and then what it would look like so is it is it a document? Is it a book? So a, a financial plan, a proper financial plan, it's gonna be a document. It's gonna be, it's gonna have a few pages. Okay. So because the thing is about holistic, a holistic financial plan, it doesn't only involve investing and building your wealth. It should also include your credit and tax obligations. It has to show your 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 your, your plans on how you are gonna spend, your your plans on how you are you have planned to take care of your family. It has to show the type of insurance that you have chosen that, that are going to look after your family and also it has to show how you have made plans to make sure that your estate doesn't become insolvent that, but it's going to be solvent. Okay. So it has to include your, 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 your savings. We also include your retirement savings as well. A specific plan on how you're going to reach your, your, your target when it comes to retirement as well. So it does not necessarily include only investing and building wealth. We have to look at the way how you're gonna how you're gonna look after your family, how you're gonna save for your kids' education. So it's just unfortunate that I did not print out a document on how it's gonna look like, but okay. I can send it to you. Then you can share it with your with your viewers. Okay. Because it's gonna it's, it's, it's a whole document. So we look at, for instance, how you, how how are you gonna make provision if you get disabled? Yes. How are you gonna make provision if you get a critical illness? How you make provision for your kids' education while they are young? How you make provision for you yourself when you go into retirement that you're gonna live a comfortable life? How have you made provisions for your family? You have to protect your family and yourself by having That's enough true. insurance, okay. and then making sure that you have prepared your estate in such a way that uh, it doesn't get insolvent. Okay. So is a, a financial plan a legal document, perhaps? Yeah, it's 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 a legal document. So what we do is we are we are Namfisa licensed agents. Okay. Whatever that we do, Namfisa, how can I say? Um, they, they have a look. They have they do audit trails so that they they, they, they have a look. Like, okay, but Maria, if you say that uh, Naya has a a need a need for two million how did you come at that specific need how do you know mm. that she needs two million mm. so the way that we come at that at that specific amount is when we do a normal financial needs analysis to okay. identify your need i hear you now. so you do that and then we complete a record of advice for instance 
because uh, you get clients whereby uh, so namfisa is the regulator right yes so namfisa is our regulator guys so if you have any issues with your advisor or whatnot you go to namfisa that's where you go and lay your complaints yes they are the police yeah <laughs> <laughs> basically they are the the police so if you have any issue with your advisor or broker or you feel like something weird just happened or whatnot yeah. You just go to Namfisa and then okay. they'll be able to assist you. Wow. <sighs> I'm also learning as we are talking here. So you, you 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 touched a little bit on retirement. You touched a little bit on that. So how how do people like you and me and the ordinary citizen, how do we prepare for retirement? You know, with all these uncertainties that are surrounding yeah. us in this day and age. Okay. How do we do that? Uh, you know that uh, we can't really control what happens in the market. But it's quite important for you to start planning for retirement. Because at the end of the day, you like to you know, maintain the same lifestyle. Yeah. So like with your, with your question, we can maybe use two scenarios. Somebody who's nearing retirement and somebody who's young, who's, fa- who's saving towards retirement. Let's start with somebody who's young. Uh, any person who is working today, it's important for you to have your own retirement package because you cannot depend on the company. What if you lost that job? That's true. You have to, it's important for you to, to save towards your own retirement package. We can't even rely on the government. Yes, you can't even rely on the government. Things can go wrong. Yeah. But in regards to the uncertainties, you know, uh, we, cannot, we don't have control over what happens in the stock market. But the only advice that I can give you is to stick in it because historically, markets always bounce back. You don't want to be that person who was saving towards a retirement, but mm. then when you see that the market is doing bad, you disinvest. Oh, no. Basically, you, you you stop contributing towards your retirement, mm. you're going to regret very badly. Because when the market bounces back, yeah. then you have lost, um, you know, all those interest, the capital gains. That you were supposed to gain. Yes, exactly. That's and true. then you're just going to increase the gap. Then if you start to contribute again, then you have to contribute a, a lot of money. Yes, compared, for you to catch up. Yeah, for you to catch up. So, but is it all? Is that all there is? I mean, stocks, stocks. Yeah, you know the thing is, uh, uh, where does your money go? Mm-hmm. The money that you contribute in the retirement annuity. Most of the time, it goes to companies that are listed on a stock exchange. Okay. They are the safest companies to invest your money in. Yeah, you get some companies that uh, contribute uh, individuals' money into unlisted companies. Okay. These are not companies that are not on a stock exchange, and they are very risky. For example, it can be your friend who's starting a business, and then you, and then you, and then we feel like, for instance, if we are, if we are the company where you are contributing the, the retirement money, mm. we decide to invest in this small company. Mm. But then this company fails; mm. it, it, it just then disappears, and you lose. But yeah. if you look at companies that are on the stock exchange, they have a solid uh, balance sheet. Okay. You know, those are the companies that you have to look at. And coming back to an individual who's nearing retirement or who's into retirement yeah. and during these uncertainties, it's important for you to switch your funds into a conservative or more cautious fund. Okay. So that so that you don't face a lot of risk of losing money. Do you want to talk more about that? Because the more conservative you call them. Yeah. Conservative basically means that it's a fund that is not risky. Okay. Do you understand? The chances of you losing money is very minimum compared to an individual who, who is investing in equities. If you are a young person, I would recommend you to invest in equities because that's a long-term thing and you can make good returns. But if you are nearing retirement or you are in retirement, it's important for you to switch into a cautious and conservative fund so that you don't lose a lot of money. Are we talking about bonds, perhaps? They can, it can be bonds and cash because those are bonds conservative. Bonds and cash. Yeah, they are conservative and they are very liquid. Very liquid basically means that, uh, for instance, if you want your money, mm-hmm. and the company will be able to give your money within three days. Okay. That, that's why they, they say it's very liquid. It doesn't take long for you to get your money. So, so the cash and bonds, they, they are con- very conservative. How about real estate? I've heard m- people would rather build a house maybe and then you say this is my retirement uh, package what do you think about that it's a it's also an option that you can consider the fact that you gonna have the control of your income Okay. you decide how much this specific individual is gonna contribute but keep in mind there's also a disadvantage about it you understand what if you get uh, 
individuals that are now selling in front of your house. Mm. Before that, nobody was there. That your rent was eight thousand. Now you get somebody, or for example, Ventus. Not, I'm not saying it's a it's, it's a bad way. I'm just saying if you get somebody who is selling in front of your house, your house. it loses value. It loses value, <laughs> then obviously you have to drop your your rental. It's true. So those things also play a big I role. I really never thought about that, but it's so true. I would not want to buy a house yes. where people are just selling in front yes, of me. Yes, exactly. Okay. Wow. Oh, and you also have to look at the area. Also, for instance, is a is the taxi rank? How far is is the mall? I said, it also plays a role. If your house is somewhere deep, you know, that there's no taxi rank, it's difficult to get cab, it's difficult to go to town, you know, you will struggle to get individuals that will go and rent there unless they have their own cars and whatnot. Okay. So it's important to look at the area where you where you are building your house as well. Wow. Thanks for that. Guys, I hope you are actually taking notes because this is very relevant information. Um, so Mario, my next question now is is also a scenario. So say uh, a person has managed to save up five thousand yeah. uh, dollars, which is like five thousand rands. What would you advise that person to invest in? Okay. Uh, the the first thing that I always ask is, uh, why do you want to why do you want to save or invest? Okay. You have to, you should, It's always important for you to have a specific goal. The why. If, yes. If you have a goal, then you have the discipline to, to remain invested. Yes. And the other thing is, you have to know your risk tolerance. What type of investor you are? Because we get a few type of investors. You know, okay. We get a conservative type of investor, person who is a bit of moderate, and a person who is a bit of both aggressive and moderate, and then we get the aggressive type of investor. Okay. So it's important for you to know your why and the type of investor that you are then it makes it easier for us to select a specific investment platform for you. But then the best one is a unit trust. The fact that it is very affordable, well regulated, and it's very flexible. And and a lot of people can afford a unit trust because the minimum is 5,000, not 5,000, but $500. It can be 5,000 annually or 2,000 annually. And, okay. it's, it's, and it's one of the best uh, investment platform that I can recommend to anybody. Okay. While we are still on uh, on investments, like when we say the best investment, do you have like a certain percentage that you would say if you earn a certain percentage on your investment, then it's worth it, or if you're earning a certain, it's not worth it? Uh, is it now in terms of returns? Yeah, the returns. You, you see, the returns are, are are determined by the type of fund where you are going to invest your money. Okay. If if you if you choose to invest in a conservative or cautious fund uh, compared to investing in properties or equities, the returns are gonna be very different because property and equities are aggressive. The the other stuff like uh, cash and bonds, they are not aggressive. They are conservative. Mm. Obviously, the returns differ because the risk is less compared to the other two. Ah, that reminds me. High risk, high, risk, high, high returns. returns. Exactly. Okay, I get you. Now. So you should also look at the amount. You cannot invest somebody's five thousand into a fund that is aggressive. Okay. That's because he's too small and if if he loses a bit of money, he will you he, he, he will feel it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so rather, if if the amount is small, rather invest in the conservative. In, yeah, like cash or in bonds. Okay. Yes. Well, thank you very much for that one. I think it, it, it is now very clear. You also touched uh, on life insurance yeah, yeah. Uh, policies. What do you think about that? Are they for everyone? Is it everyone should do it? Why I'm saying is it for everyone? Because sometimes some people are, do not have a constant flow of income. Some people do not have permanent employment. They are probably contractual. And these policies you need to be putting in a fixed amount every month yeah. and if you miss your payment then you lose all the money so tell me a little bit about that one and what you think okay uh, when it comes to life insurance for an individual who's who is unemployed or who is not on on permanent basis uh, you see it's important if, if you if to look at the what the person's uh, budget can they afford it uh, I, I will not say I won't recommend life insurance to anybody. I will recommend it. If you are unemployed or have a temporary job, mm. 
-hmm. It's important for you to rather go with a term policy, life insurance policy, compared Is to whole life. Is there something like that? Yeah. So okay. there's two types of life insurances. There's term and whole life. So whole life is more expensive compared to term. Ah. So I would rather recommend an individual to take a term life policy if he is unemployed and has a specific income that can pay that policy. Or if he doesn't have a fixed job. I would rather say you must just start with a life insurance that is on a term basis. So okay. a term basically means that, okay, this life cover is going to cover you for the next 10 years or for the next 15 years, then it stops. Okay. But then it's going to be more affordable. Okay. So I, I would recommend a life insurance for an individual. Okay, a question was once asked uh, for a person who had been contributing for a very long time. And then, you know, like in this day and age, there's nothing called uh, job security. So he lost the job. Yeah. And then now the question was, should I keep working to pay this life insurance or must I just leave it because the fear is if i stop paying then i'm going to lose everything okay so what would be the best advice for that person so what i will say is uh, he has to go back on uh, to his budget and then he has to look at uh, unnecessary expenses that he can cut off because it's important for you to keep your life insurance policy and also if he feels like he's not he's, he's not able to afford he has to reduce the premium okay reduce the premium you can do that yeah you can do that Try to reduce your premium and also cut unnecessary expenses because you can have like a DSTV that you pay $900. Just go back to the normal one and pay $400. Or nothing at all. Yeah, or nothing <laughs> at all. Or stop that gym payment. For instance, if he has a family, it's quite important for him to make sure that he has that life cover active. So you can reduce it even to the minimum of, of $250. Per month. Per month. So it's important for you to make sure that uh, your life insurance is, is, is active. So Mario, how do the life insurance policies work? Okay, uh, a life insurance policy is basically uh, a contractual agreement between you, the policy holder, and the insurer. For instance, let me give you an example. It can be Sunlam and, and you is the policy holder. So what you do is that you pay a specific premium to this company and then they undertake the risk of paying out a specific lump sum. If you pass on, then they pay to your to your beneficiaries. If you're still alive, you maybe get disabled, they give you a specific lump sum. If you get diagnosed with a serious illness, they pay a specific lump sum. So all these lump sums that I'm talking about, they are identified when you do a proper financial needs analysis, when we look at your specific needs. And that's how it basically works. You can use it as a collateral for you if you want to buy a house, or if you want to get a personal loan, if you want to buy a car, get a business loan. So you can use it for basically a lot of things because it comes in handy. But the reason why I suggest to use it as collateral is the fact that uh, you do not want to use a parent's house as collateral. <laughs> because if things go wrong, the bank will repossess it very fast. So, you, so it's important for you to have a life insurance. At least then you can use it as a so in other words, collateral. a life insurance is an asset. Yes, it's a, it's, a, it's a big asset. You know, a life insurance can change individuals' lives. Understand? For instance, if you get diagnosed with a critical illness mm. and then you, you have medical aid, but then it depletes, those bills still have to be paid. But if you have if you had critical illness benefit under your life insurance cover, that specific lump sum that you get, you can use it to pay your medical bills. Wow. Do you see that? I didn't know about that part. Yeah. So it's just that people just don't know. Uh, it, it, when you talk about life insurance, they just think it's the death part only. Mm. But there are also other benefits that are involved in no, the whole like in the whole package. I'm so, just thinking it's only after you die. Yeah, so it's quite important. And and I've heard people who who pretend who fake their deaths yeah. so that they can get this. <laughs> yeah, they do. But then uh, you know, there's a lot of underwriting that goes into this whole process. Even when it comes to the claim stage, mm. it's they, it's it's a process. So it's not gonna be that easy if you claim if you if you fake your death and whatnot. So it's it's not that you're gonna claim. It's gonna be very difficult for mm. you to claim it. They don't make it easy. Oh wow, you guys! I think we have to make an appointment with Mario. <laughs> Thanks for that one. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think this is all we had um, for today. If you have any questions that you would want us to direct to Mario, please uh, contact me. You can leave a message 
in the comments below or you can send to me an email and uh, Mario will gladly respond to that. So Mario, maybe in conclusion, do you want to tell people where they can find you or if they need any help, what kind of a hel uh, help you can give to them? Okay. Things like that. Uh, so guys, if you need any financial advice in terms of uh, insurance and investment or anything that has to do with finances, you can kindly reach me out on on my email mario at showworth.africa or on my cell phone number 0814187426 we are based in Bentuk Prosperita so you guys are welcome to make a tenant our offices and just to to make it clear we are not fee based uh, financial planners so meaning uh, i can give you pro bono advice and just help you because uh, helping individuals and changing people's life is my passion and you guys are welcome to make a tenant our offices and thank you so much for having me Thank you so much. I'm going to be the first client after this. <laughs> Thank you, Mario. Welcome. Yes.